In this episode, Jolie Cloud 1.0, Chrome 6 for Linux, and Novell OpenSUSE 11.3. QuickSurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at QuickSurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. And if there's anything uh, you like about my shows, you'll certainly find other technology-related shows over there that are likable as well. Let's go ahead and get into the news for Season 10, Episode 20. From Softpedia, there's a story here. Google released Chrome 6.0.466.0 for Linux. As usual, just in time for the weekend break, the Google Chrome developers at Google announced last evening, July 15th, yet another unstable release of the upcoming Google Chrome 6 web browser for Linux and Windows operating systems. Google Chrome 6.0.466.0 brings a few important features and improvements for the Ubuntu 10.10 distribution. Uh, it's av available for both 32 and 64-bit architectures with binary packages for Ubuntu. However, it's a developmental release and should not be installed on production machines, which is pretty much the status quo for anything. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why? Well, GoToAssist Express has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, and really anybody that doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable will appreciate GoToAssist Express. There's no IT maintenance or updating, it's so fast you'll be on a client's computer troubleshooting in seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From Read Write Web, there's a story, Weekend Project, Install Web Apps in Chrome or Chromium. At this year's Google I.O. Developer Conference, the internet search giant made a surprising announcement. Not only was the company releasing a web-connected cloud operating system called Chrome OS, it would also include an app store called the Chrome Web Store. Pretty cool. It will help users discover, purchase, and install web applications from a central location. However, you don't have to wait until Chrome OS debuts to install Chrome Web Apps. You can test a few of them right now by using a Chrome Developer Build or Chromium, the open source browser behind Google Chrome. So uh, by all means, check this story out. It's all about uh, running web apps in Chrome, which is kind of neat. From Technologizer, Jolie Cloud Netbook OS is all grown up in version 1.0. That's right. Next week, the Jolie Cloud 1.0 is being released. If you're a Netbook user, check it out. It's uh, worth, a, worth a, sh a shot and it's free. From Business Wire, Research and Markets, Linux Bible 2010 Edition, boot up Ubuntu, Fedora, Nopix, Debian, OpenSUSE, and 13 other distributions. This is a press release about a book, the definitive guide to the basics of one of the most popular operating systems in the world. Whether you're a first-time Linux user or you're migrating from another operating system, this book is an ideal introductory guide for getting comfortable with the building block nature of Linux. Written by best-selling author Christopher Negus, this guide is packed with in-depth descriptions of the basics of Linux desktops, servers, and programming tools and gets you up to speed on all the new and exciting features of the newest version, Linux 2010. Negus walks you through transitioning from Windows or Mac and helps you find the Linux distribution that best meets your needs. So uh, if you're a noob, check this book out. It's awesome stuff. From InfoWorld, there's a story, OpenSUSE aims to gain ground for Linux on tablets and notebooks. 
for the time being, Apple dominates the mobile platform market, though Google, Microsoft, and HP are hungrily eyeing that pie. But there's also a dark horse contending in the field, or perhaps more accurately, a flock of dark penguins. A newly released version of OpenSUSE draws upon various flavors of Linux to bring further support to tablets and netbooks, and to a far lesser degree, smartphones. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, Apple with their iPad currently pretty much rules the market at this point. But, uh, you know, there are vendors out there that are looking to make it make a go of it. And Microsoft doesn't really have anything that that would run really well on a tablet or even a netbook. I mean, you know, Windows XP that's the best they've got for a tablet i mean come on or even windows 7 i would never run windows 7 on a tablet or a netbook so what uh, you know it really boils down to linux is it at that point anyway so it'll be interesting the next 12 months or so will be really neat stuff going on in the tablet space from server watch novell OpenSUSE 11.3 linux os gets btrfs and a new kernel after eight milestone releases and two release candidates, Novell's OpenSUSE 11.3 Linux distribution has now become generally available. The new version provides numerous improvements over the OpenSUSE 11.2 release. Among the new items is a next-generation Linux, Linux BTRFS file system, the 2.6.34 kernel, and support for LXDE Linux desktop. So uh, pretty neat stuff. Uh, by all means, if you're an OpenSUSE user, this is uh, something worth checking into. From Syscon Media, Wind River Linux seeks level 4 plus cert. Wind River Linux Secure, a secure embedded Linux that should be available in the first half of 2011, is an evaluation by the National Information Assurance Partnership to be certified to Common Criteria Evaluation Assurance Level 4 Plus. If it passes, it'll be the first commercial embedded Linux operating system accepted by the NIAP. It will initially be available on some Intel Power and ARM chips. So, uh, pretty neat stuff. Um, if you are an embedded Linux developer, this is worth taking note of. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, I thank you for watching and listening. For those of you who are still uh, listening to the MP3 and AUG channels, um, if you have not already done so, please go to quicksurf.com, look for the show notes for the latest version of Linux News Log, change out your subscription feeds if you've not already done so to the new RSS feeds, and I will see all of you on the next episode. You can follow me at twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon, and I'll see you then. Bye.